Hello and welcome back to another episode of Podcasting is Praxis. David is out tonight. He has been arrested for many crimes, particularly to do with all the libel he so frequently <laughs> does. So it's me taking over for him tonight. Uh, hi, I'm Rob and tonight with me are Alistair. Hey, uh, I think I don't think that's particularly fair on David. And when he hears this, I think there will be words. Well, I mean, if, as long as they're not libelous words, like always other words are. <laughs> uh, and also I have Jamie. All right. And making a very much appreciated friendly guest appearance, it's Elijah. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm looking forward to a nice relaxing ASMR session talking about normal news and normal things happening and just... We got good vibes. The Don't worry about it. There's, the there's good stable. vibes. There's some bad vibes. I'm just looking forward to listening to Jamie podcasting directly from the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be an exciting adventure. I'm horizontal. <laughs> Come fall asleep with me. <laughs> this is actually our pre-launch, uh, pre-Patreon exclusive of podcasting as Praxis After Dark. Um, if you listen to future episodes, they will all be. We will all be in bed recording. Yeah, you should also be in bed while you're listening to this. I'm sure that will help get you in the mood. Mm. Yes, actually, for this episode, it might. Um, because With I have a very strange tale for you. If you're standing up, lay the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, first things first, a small repeat from last week, but unfortunately, the siege, siege of Gaza and the West Bank is not over. Uh, of course, we've seen... Damn, they haven't they haven't wrapped that shit up yet. <laughs> no, of course we've seen nobody take responsibility. Biden was just on stage making jokes to Rashida Tlib, whose family lives in the West Bank, about how her whether or not her grandmother's okay. So that's all. We're really having fun with it now. I do like the idea of like Joe Biden and like Bibi Netanyahu just being like on a stage and people going, "Whose fault is this?" And they're just all you know shrugging their shoulders, <laughs> and like, "I don't know. Why are you asking me? I just live here." You know. <laughs> We're all looking for the guy who did this. <laughs> yeah. Just like fucking Seinfeld level, you know, stand up with the uh, exposed brick wall behind them, just like doing bits while, you know, uh -huh. children explode behind them. <laughs> um, anyway, so we said it last week. We'd like to say it again. If there are things you can do, uh, show your support for the people of Palestine. There's, there are a number of demonstrations going on quite regularly. I don't have dates for you, but Twitter will have them. Otherwise, if you want to donate, you still can. Uh, there's map.org.uk, which is Medical Aid for Palestine. They are specifically medical workers who help put people, heal people, get medicine in, get equipment in, which is sorely lacking in Palestine at the moment. So donate there where you can. Otherwise, if you go to muslimaid.org, they also have a specific appeal for Palestine. If you can donate money, that would be much appreciated. Uh, otherwise, if you just want to shitpost and go after many of the twits we see on Twitter these days, spouting off about how the IDF are the really oppressed people, Feel free to do that, but material donations and your presence on the street may be more appreciated. But please do donate as and when you can. I do want to call out the uh, well, I say sh call out, shout out rather to um, all the people in France who um, went out in you know to mar essentially march for Palestine, even though it was banned, and they ended up with extremely cool pictures of like that guy getting shot with a fucking fire hose while holding a um, Palestinian flag and looking cool as hell while doing it. Yeah, that guy did actually look cool as hell. Also, shout out to the Dog Workers Union in Livorno, uh, port in Italy, who have I thought you said dog and... walkers at first there, and I was like, well, <laughs> I mean, fair enough, but like, I'm not sure how dog walkers are going to exactly help the situation in the uh, West Bank. <laughs> Uh, no, they're dock workers and they uh, have refused, they've downed tools and they refuse to load uh, a ship that is carrying armaments to Israel. So shout out to them. You know, solidarity is international. Uh, so shout out this to is, them. Yeah, that's what used to happen during the civil war in Spain, uh, where various dock workers unions would just refuse to load up cargo that was going to the Francoist forces. Um, I thought France cared very deeply about free speech ever since the Charlie Hebdo shooting. Yeah, like, they, they, weird they, how that panned out, isn't it? You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strain. 
Well, I mean, France, France is having a big fash turn anyway. It's a different different story, I think, for maybe a different pod. But yeah, it's a, that's all getting a bit fucking terrifying over oh, there. My, my um, personal fa- I just want to say my personal favourite like thing to have come out of France, aside from the um, the guy with the Palestinian flag, was uh, Marine Le Pen having to defend like uh, freedom of religion <laughs> versus um, you know Jupiterian centrist God himself. Uh, Macron in that debate <laughs> yeah. the other week. That was pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> signs that some, yeah. The sign that things are extremely cool. normal in your country. When Nigel Farage, the Nigel Farage equivalent is saying, actually, we have freedom of religion here. Uh, anyway, speaking of strike action being cool and good, um, many congratulations to the uh, 400 bus drivers of the Go Northwest Bus Drivers Union. After 80 days of strike action, they are members of Unite and they forced the firm to not engage in fire and rehire, which would have cost hundreds, if not thousands, of jobs and certainly would have cost the bus drivers who worked through the pandemic thousands of pounds. So many congratulations to them. Uh, you know, Hell strike yeah, that's my works. union right there. Exactly. So, you know, if, if anything... We say say it early, say it often. Uh, join a union, join a good union when you can. There are also very shitty ones. But a, a, a bad union is well. I, I hesitate to say always better than no union, but generally uh, it is better than nothing at all. At least, at least they'll be offer, able to offer you legal advice. Yeah. Yeah, there's always something. But if you have a choice, uh, shop around and find the best union for you in in, in the marketplace of unions. It's like oh. a pizza, you know. Sometimes there's pineapple on it, but it's still a pizza. Like, no, is that is that is that your official <laughs> Italian opinion of food for today? Elijah? Oh, we can go deeper, maybe. <laughs> no, we are not. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> What's this I'm hearing about carbonara? <laughs> no, stop it. I will stop not be it. baited. I'm not your dancing monkey. <laughs> Also, I think we've sort of banned doing food discussions on this podcast because I think that might be the one thing that breaks up this thing and makes us all terminally angry at each other. What if I'm doing it specifically to wind up Elijah? (laughs) No, because you'll wind me up too. (laughs) God, everyone's Italian lately. What's going on? I've got the stop recording button right here. I will nuke my entire segment if I have to. (laughs) (laughs) Somehow retroactively delete the entire podcast. (laughs) Uh, anyway, in a slightly less funny issue, but also still worthwhile talking about, was announced, I think, today or in the Queen's speech, I can't remember, but I would like to just extend a hearty fuck you to Robert Jenrick, whose latest edict is that all new pub- and existing public buildings now must yeah. have separate men's and women's bathrooms. Anybody care to guess where that particular idea comes from? Oh, the deepest pit of hell. Oh, dipshits. It's, yeah, it's too... I think the government's going to give me money to put in a, a second bathroom so that when people come over, I can have them go into different ones. Uh, apparently, if you have existing bathrooms that are essentially unisex and you have more than one, you must install partitions. If you are oh my God. in a public building, an office, a shop, an entertainment venue, so that's you, Elijah, hospitals, public services. Yeah, This is, of course... You know, as, we, as we know, Elijah is an entertainment venue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I run one. <laughs> so we're fine. Uh, we've got like three bathrooms. Does that mean you need to have three partitions? The thir- the no. mythical third gender. The, 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 the ladies' bathroom is actually huge and it has lockers in it and a fish tank. and A, a fish tank? Yeah. It's really cool. What, what um, kind of fish they got uh, in that bad boy? It's, it's, it's very... Yeah, there's a fish tank. Yeah, what, what fish <laughs> are in uh, it? Come on. Uh, the oh, I don't, know. I don't take care of them. <laughs> care enough to make note of the fact there is a fish tank, but don't care enough to make note of the fish contained within. I'm yeah, disappointed. I'm not a fish guy. I think there's well, a dory. It's, it's fish, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. It's it's fucking fish. I can't eat them. They're the small, <laughs> colourful, decorative ones. Are they within um, your quota, Elijah? No, they're not in my action zone, no. I do not take care of the fish. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, Rob's it's looking not common to for people... fish empire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the bathrooms is huge and has a couch and has lockers and a fish tank, so people will hang out there sometimes, you know? And, and sometimes people want the key to the disabled bathroom uh, so they can have sex. No, that's not true. But... Uh... <laughs> well, that they don't ask for the key or that they don't want to have sex? Uh, I don't know. 
It sounds like, yeah. A lot of questions. A lot of questions on today's podcast. As one of the proprietors of a of a music venue, Pete, you should know about about this. You know, you should make separate <laughs> rooms available uh, just in case Julie Bindle drop, decides to drop by. Oh, we're installing a B and B upstairs. It's going to be fucking epic. It's going to like a like an, an actual grassroots music venue with. Um, oh, so not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we can look into that. No, it's going to be hostels. It's going to be really fucking cool. I'm going to uh, uh, host like a pod get together or something at some point, um, which I'm looking forward to once we're out of this fucking shape. Don't worry, Elijah. There will always be fucking shite to, to be contending yeah. with. <laughs> yeah, it is Rainy Fash Island, of course. So there we have that to, to look forward to. But speaking of doing cool things in, in bathrooms, <laughs> Just wanted to give a quick shout out to Manchester University. It was a piece by Ben McGowan at the Tab uh, earlier this week. That apparently, their Manchester University is one of the rare ones that uh, has a zero tolerance drug policy. Uh, not just on the campus, but also in its housing, which has made them somewhere between sixty and one hundred forty-six thousand quid in fine over the last couple of years, of which they spent a total of one thousand on drug education. So not only do they have a shit policy, they don't even <laughs> turn the money around. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> it's it's so great when you get uh, a policy like this, which is just a pure distilled dose of ideology. It's great, like you know, it's not. It, it is always a pretense of like, oh yeah, we're just trying to keep trying to keep young minds safe. It's not like bollocks. You spend a, <laughs> you spend one thousand quid out of your you know, let's say sixty thousand pound that you've taken in from all the students, um, and why? Why have you done that? Oh, because of the financialization and commercialization of uh, like. Uh, is it high? I can never remember if it's higher or further. Even though we had like Eleanor Yarniga on the other day, um, I think it's higher, isn't it? Yeah, higher education um, being turned into like a commodity and uh, something that you just you know use to print money. And yeah, cool. Yeah. I love to see this um, expanding into just the war on drugs in on campuses. Yeah. It it still kind of baffles the mind that every single university was telling students, yeah, come. Come into your student hall, put down the deposit. No, you can't cancel the deposit once you're here. Come in, you, you know, and, and then... Yeah, now you're here, you have to stay here. A week after they move in. A week after they move in. Oh, yeah, everything's virtual, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy doing fucking daily Zoom lectures from your, you know, sort of prison-sized cubicle. Christ. I mean, in, in, incidentally, speaking of this, if you remember, uh, that was earlier, I think, at the start of the pandemic, there was a demonstration where one of the unis, if you remember, they put up like fence, fencing outside one of the oh, campus yeah. buildings yeah. to promote. Yeah. yeah, that was also Manchester University. So Fantastic. not only could you, you could not do. leave your fucking building, you couldn't even do drugs in it while you were fucking <laughs> <laughs> What you should do when you go to university is instead of staying in the halls, you should rent a house from some local landlord, fucking trash it, and then do a bunk without paying. <laughs> and, then, and then go harass a giant wooden goose, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I think it was fiberglass rather than wood. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh. There's a time and a place for everything, and it's university. So yeah, I just I don't yeah. understand. Like you know, you can you know if you're if you're in uni, just like be cool and do drugs. It's fine. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, you know. I mean, it take is, some it normal is. precautions. Don't be a moron, but you know, just be. I cool. mean, it is utterly, completely, and utterly farcical to even pretend that a zero tolerance drug policy makes any semblance of sense in a university setting what's that you've got a bunch of teenage to essentially young adult kids as it were um away from home for like broadly the first time in their lives who are all finding their place in the world trying to try new things trying new experiences damn i wonder how drugs could factor into any of this whatsoever mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just it just it's just one of those things like the whole you know drugs are only ever um, in terms of whether it's the government or you know any sort of authority drugs are only ever seen as like um, blights on whoever it is that consumes them. They're never seen as these things that can actually be enjoyable and fun to do and interesting no, to do. They're a they're a blight when the poor do them. Yeah. If if you're Michael Gove and you're just doing fucking rails off the table in the cabinet office, nobody gives a fuck about that. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> if you catch if you catch some like working class kid at university with too many aspirin, get the fucking guns out, lad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in this case specifically. Also, yeah, when you said when you said there that like you know the people at university are like 
teenagers to to like young adults you're forgetting that the, one of the the classic mainstays of university life which is somebody's da having a midlife crisis <laughs> <laughs> i think i think in my case it was somebody's aunt <laughs> but yes um, yeah that's but, always good yeah <laughs> but yeah specifically apparently what was, what was what's great what's great about that is three times i did a first year at university and all three times somebody's dad was there having a midlife crisis. <laughs> and then years, years later, my dad had a midlife crisis and went to university <laughs> when he was yeah. like 50 or something. I think I think his 50th birthday was like we, we had his 50th birthday party with a bunch of students in Brighton. Holy shit. What the yeah. fuck? It's I'm 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 doing a college course just now. So I've got like I'm I'm 30 and I've got like a. a a class full of 18 year olds and a classmates it's interesting it's it's really it it you don't really feel it because we can't go out to the pub you know so i can't be embarrassing to like my you teenage classmates te- you should be the one a, teaching them about responsible in the social setting well, <laughs> i would if we had any opportunities to actually go out funnily enough, i i never really started doing drugs until after i left uni because while i was at uni i was like young enough that i could just drink all night long without needing like an extra little kick and then when i hit like 25 or 26 something happened and i was like getting to 4 a.m you're like ah, i could do a little line here just to keep the pints coming because <laughs> it starts slowing down <laughs> so i kind of lost out on some interesting opportunities but uh there's always the midlife crisis to look forward to so Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous though. Like um, Manchester Uni, I was reading up a little bit about it. Also, it says in the article, like not only like will they fine you when they just like catch you, I don't know, smoking a joint or whatever, but they also, if you're in their halls, um, they do you, like random j- drug checks in your room, and they have sniffer dogs for that as well. So like oh some fucking God. rent-a-cop psycho. Oh, these people need in. a fucking hobby life. Do you know what I mean? This is just Jeez. tragic to hear about. Right. Like. Well, so long as it's not drugs, that's fine. Uh, do you know oh. what I mean, though? Like fucking, oh, yeah, we got we got like some... This is just somebody's fucking mate owns a company full of rent-a-cops and like... Yeah, you that's, know, they're, that's they're absolutely like fucking, what it is. Oh, yeah, we, we want to brutalize some kids. Can you, can you fit... Can you can you sort that out? And it's like, yeah, why not? We'll just... We'll just uh, students have drugs let's go and fucking let's go and bully them 100 percent. it's an attempt it's like a sort of half-assed attempt at doing the sort of um uh school to pipeline thing uh school to prison pipeline thing they have in the us you know where where they put cops in the schools and then any pretext gets some kid sent to a private jail uh so that some yeah. school local governor gets kickbacks or whatever but but it's the uk so they're kind of amateur airing it <laughs> and doing it in the for the pure the hell of it. As the PFI, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some university director's got, like, a mate with a private company. I think you're, I, I think you're like closer special, than you want to be there, yeah. <laughs> special floor of the halls of residence where the doors lock from the outside. <laughs> Jeez. Nah, but it's, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, you know, and then apparently Bristol Uni, I, I didn't know this, but apparently Bristol Uni, which seems a bit more normal, they just do, like, harm reduction. They just teach a bit about, you know, what drugs is and they just, you know so their general policy is like, yeah, fucking kids at uni are going to do drugs and we're just going to try have to say, have they teach a bit about what drugs is. What is drugs, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> we need to ask David what the secret of big drug is. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a series of tubes, I believe. But I have to say, I have to say, as someone who as someone who has been out uh, in Bristol a few times, uh, Nick, if you're listening, this one's for you. Um, <laughs> We like it is it is stark because um like in the nightclubs there they have like um drug testing stations and stuff so it's like if you bought brought something with you and you want to just be you know you want to be sure what you're taking you can go over to them they'll do a little um you know little test with a I, I, I've not done it myself but uh, <laughs> of course not no 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 fine upstanding young man that you are. <laughs> Look, it was around this time that one of my friends discovered buying drugs on the internet. So uh, well, yeah. <laughs> we can excise this later if we want to. But yeah. um, that's not a great idea. idea. <laughs> you should pair it with like a dealer right there. You know, like this is authentically sourced. By well, the way, let me tell, let worries. me tell you. If you it, walk up and you discover that your bag of powder is like half cut with fucking flour or gravel or something well, or sea salt, I knew, I knew a lad at uni. <laughs> who got stopped in the street by someone trying to sell him weed and he bought a block of resin and it turned out to be wood. 
<laughs> and like the, the the guy the guy told him it was like he was like oh what what kind of what kind is it and he told him it was like um it was like fucking oh it was like black oak or some shit some made up shit like that and then, and then like people were sat around trying to smoke they were like fucking hell this is harsh as fuck mate and because it was wood <laughs> Like selling bags of oregano to fucking middle school kids. Oh, that, that <laughs> happened to some kids at like at my school when you know I, I was also at school. Um, <laughs> they spent something like two hundred quid between I don't know like half dozen of them. Um, and it's they apparently it smelt kind of weedy, but when they opened it, yeah, uh-huh. it was just yeah. um, <laughs> wouldn't be out of place in an Italian's kitchen. <laughs> oh, fucking dipshits at my school were always trying to like like. Uh, Shit from the anarchist's cookbook where it was like, oh, to dry out banana peels and then like scrape it off and like, put it in a cigarette. And it was like, well, do you know what I mean? Fucking, or, or tea bags, was it? Like, if you did something with tea bags, you could get like a high off them. Damn. It's, it's, it's interesting I... to know what things are like in the stone ages of drug consumption. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, not that much. But... When I was a kid, but there was all these um, trends talked about in hushed tones, you know, like in the hallways, like doing tequila shots through the eyeballs. Or uh, oh, that just hurts uh, like a bastard. I have done that. That's like, just really painful. Uh, have you done that? Yeah I, yeah, I wouldn't try that. That sounds like a very bad idea. But like uh, doing a beer bong up the butt, you know, or like the vodka soaked tampon kind of thing. Just all these like weird things. My mate did that. That, that does work. He was drunk out of his fucking mind. It, it, it's very fucking dangerous. It goes right in your bloodstream. But this is all shit that kids don't do. <laughs> they don't come up with it by themselves. This is like you know those 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 frantic panic inducing sort of like local news shows in the U.S. that go you know uh, shocking report. Are your kids putting uh, uh, garlic and vodka into blenders? And pouring it into their ears. And you're like, well, no, but <laughs> now the parents are worried. And they've locked down the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they keep the high potency stuff lo- under lock and key. I had one mate of mine. He, uh, I mean, to be fair, that was very fucking dumb of him in retrospect. Um, his, his dealer, who was sort of also his mate, like came by the ha- by his house one day, rang the door and said, can you hold him to this bag for me a couple of days? And like, don't look inside. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the bag? I mean, I, I mean, he, I, I, he said to me he didn't check. He just put it under his bed and said, yeah, right. And so a couple of days later, like the, the guy comes back, takes the bag off his hands and says, well, as a, as a thank you, I think he gave him like five or six grams of, of pretty high grade Coke. Um, and not, not to date myself too much, but this was around the time that the um, second Iraq war was about to kick off. And my mate really wanted to see it live. So he stayed awake for like four or five days, like railing Coke and watching CNN. He was that really is, weird by the time I saw that him. That is a very fucking, like, that is a vibe. Holy <laughs> shit. Was that man's name Donald Rumsfeld by any chance? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that dated, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I don't know. But yeah, so that's uh, Manchester University, an all-around great university who also is apparently refusing to give students back their tuition or their residency fees, even though they've just been <laughs> fucking locked in for, you know, for fucking I feel, forever. I feel like we need to do like a whole episode on fucking, you know, drug culture slash uh, war on drugs in the UK, maybe. Yeah, future episode. But yeah, yeah, future episode. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of this podcast, where we are now joined by James. What's up? Hello. Yes, I'm here. I have clawed myself away from other activities, and I'm now free to have my mind melted by you, Rob. Let's go. Yeah. So before I start tonight's main story properly, I want to give uh, a big credit to a couple of journalists who wrote about this, because like, I couldn't tell this story without them really doing the work on it. Uh, Jesse Pound and Dan Mangan, uh, Dan Mangan at CNBC. Mark, Wait, can, Mark can I get Van- a name check on that, please? Uh, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse Pound, I'm sure, sure is the one you were... No, no, uh, no, not him. Uh, D- Dan Mangan. <laughs> yes. Dan sounds- Mangan. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It sounds like something someone in the old-timey West would say is kind of like a, an interlude in the middle of their speech about how un- upset they are. <laughs> Otherwise, it's uh, Mark Vanderfeld at the FT and Matt Levine at Bloomberg because they all wrote different parts of the story I want to talk to you guys about. But I want to essentially invite you to come with me to New Jersey, um, where there's a lovely New deli Jersey. restaurant called the Hometime Deli. 
And it is many things to many people. And I love, I want to tell you just all about it. Well, you're the man in control of the ship far away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a little place called Your Hometown Deli. It's a tiny restaurant based out of New Jersey that somehow has managed to um, accumulate a market market capitalization of well over 100 million US dollar. Um, <laughs> Rob. Rob said it like RuPaul there. <laughs> 100 million US dollar. <laughs> so, um, so it's just a it's a deli shop, right? It yeah, sells yeah, sandwiches. Just, you can, buy, you, can <laughs> just buy, you can buy sandwiches and, and some gum, but I have a, a, a description of the the company coming up a little bit later. Is the is the gum made of like gold bullion or something like that? <laughs> no. like what 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 is it that justifies this 100 million dollars market cap? They must be fucking good sandwiches. They they're very excellent uh, sandwiches. <laughs> Although they, have they, they been don't... open over lockdown. No, they were closed during lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. So they've not even been delivering, but they've still got no. a market cap of 100 million. Yeah, there are yeah. no sandwiches. The total sales, I've read their SEC filings. Uh, total sales over the last two years were 35,748 US dollar. So obviously what? that's why they're worth 100 million. Can, can I just say, 35,000 is on the poor side for a yeah. deli. Like that, when you think about what that pays in terms of one person's salary, and you know that's that's terrible. That's really yeah. not very. I mean, good at I all. mean, surely that's just turnover as well. What the fuck? It, it gets even weirder because how we get to this hundred million US dollar valuation is the current share. It's an price. NFT. Uh, no, it's not <laughs> NFTs. Although it's, it's a picture oh, of man, a NFT sandwiches. Let's go. That sounds like it would be yeah. great. Because the thing about Hometown Deli is it's not just a tiny restaurant. Um, it's listed as a penny stock, so slightly off stock exchange, but you can trade shares in it. 7.8 million of them are currently out there in the free world, and their valuation is somewhere floating between 12 and $14 over the last 14 months. Sorry, hang on, Rob. When you say penny stock, is this penny stock of famous um, Wolf of Wall Street kind of fame? Yes. Uh, yes. where they were able to trade in penny stocks because they're more or less unregulated. Is that the, is that the kind of penny That's stock what you're it, talking that about? That is roughly what this is, yes. Yeah, what's a, what's a penny stock then? I've got no idea and I haven't seen Wolf of Wall Street. Okay, so the way this works is serious heavy-duty Wall Street stocks, are the, the kind where it's like Apple and Google and others, um, they are subject to strict regulation. I say strict, I mean, it, it could be better, but they, at least they are somewhat regulated, right? However, right. the vast majority of companies are not big enough to make it onto the big exchanges like the, the FTSE and the NASDAQ and all this kind of stuff. Instead, they just trade in ignominy until they get big enough to kind of get to that point and start to get regulatory scrutiny. Before that point, they are basically not really listed on the major exchanges. They are free-floating in the ether under the auspices of... Um, tell me if I'm wrong here, Rob. It's basically... Um, commercial contract law that more or less governs it am i wrong i'm, I'm not sure what the what the exact way of, of, of regulating them is but the, the most important thing where i got a lot of this information out of apart from the, the journalist i mentioned before is their sec filings because they are registered and they have shares that you can trade in public so i have to give uh, accounts so i'll i'll read you a little bit just to set yeah, the scene so about if you're um, a re- yeah so if you're a retail trader if you're just like some schmuck with an app you can log into the app and you can buy and sell shares yeah. of this deli yeah, yeah you can and anybody can do it like you could but i really don't recommend that you do um, go <laughs> online right now and trade in buy gamestop instead <laughs> Um, this is this is not advice. We just like the stock. This is really, really not stock advice, as will become abundantly clear uh, during the, the the following story. I think I think a general a, a generally good rule for the listeners is just don't fucking listen to us. Do you know what I mean? Like if we say anything's a good idea, just fucking like do the opposite. But do give um, do give us money though. Like do give us money and then don't listen to the podcast. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's be clear. We were making fun of GameStop right before it went turbo, so like uh, <laughs> we we know sweet fuck all. I nearly made money on GameStop, and then I went to pee, and in the five minutes I was in the bathroom, it peaked and crashed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the most expensive <laughs> piss you'll ever take in your life. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm still holding the stock. That that's half the fun is just holding it, right? And if nothing else, it's a little memento from 
a little time in history, but it's, I, I, I you know, it's, it, it's fine. Don't ever put in money that you wouldn't be happy losing completely. But this, this is I not swear to God, advice. this story of your hometown Delhi, uh, why <laughs> H owned by another company, but we'll get into that, is even weirder. I'll read you a little bit from their latest SEC filings, which were filed, I think, in March of this year. We have begun generating revenue from the sales of our food and beverage since our soft opening mid-October 2015. Beside equipment, fixtures, and inventory, we purchased our daily store. We have limited assets. We have minimal working capital uh, as of date of this annual report and use the cash and operating activities at the time of the end. These factors raise substantial doubt about our ability to continue as a going concern. Bear in mind, this company is worth <laughs> over a hundred million US dollar. Or is it worth a lot more? <laughs> Please don't invest in us. We're shit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is speculators, right? No, no. Like I, this I, is I, it, you. I, I have to. It's it's not speculation. Sorry, am I jumping the gun? Even okay. better. Um, <laughs> the, so during the time that these shares have been uh, trading, uh, they've they've gone in the last two years from three dollar twenty five to nine dollar twenty five for no good reason, and the company sold to private investors two and a half million of these shares at one dollars each to generate 2.5 million in cash for the business there's about Damn, 60 these, shareholders hang account. on hang on these private investors was it um sopranos limited or something like that <laughs> just being in new jersey right i'm getting a distinct vibe here <laughs> <laughs> well it it doesn't go quite in that direction I was going to say, this kind of thing, this place would need a name more like Webist Webistics or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, through our wholly owned subsidiary, Your Hometown your hometown Delhi Limited Liability Corporation, brackets Your Hometown Delhi, we operate <laughs> a delicate... <laughs> I'm sorry, <guys. laughs> I'm to have a fucking, like, three-level self-referential fucking company name. <laughs> Tom Clancy brings you Your Home Delhi by Tom Clancy, <laughs> LLC. <laughs> Why I love is it's limited liability for the sandwiches. Love it. Let's go. <laughs> this yeah. company has only been invested in by Mark Jacobs. Uh, <laughs> well, that is essentially because, like, there is the, the, the deli, the store itself, which is based in New Jersey, which is a company, but that company is owned by another company based out of Nevada because it's easier to share, uh, sell and buy shares there and to hide true ownership, which also will come up later in the story why you want to do that. So essentially, it's just a deli. It, it features, oh, this is again from the uh, filings. It features <laughs> yeah, we cannot stuff. emphasize enough, this is just a deli. <laughs> <It's> a deli. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it features home-style sandwiches and other entrees in a casual and friendly atmosphere. It provides sandwiches, soups, sal salads, deli meats, cheeses, hot cold drinks, fresh bread and rolls, and small retail items for cooking, baking, and home use, such as candy, co cookies, chewing gum, etc., etc. So this is like so it's a fucking deli, is what you're saying. <laughs> I do um, like deli meats. I really, I was like, I really <laughs> want to try one of their sandwiches. Like, I feel you, like you know we're knocking them and saying there's no way they can be a hundred, you know. But maybe, maybe the sandwiches are just that fucking good. Like, I you want know, the hundred million dollar pastrami. Maybe, maybe it's just been a succession. <laughs> I want the expensive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe, it's, maybe it's just a succession of like fucking <laughs> Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos <laughs> and Elon Musk all have like, guys, you heard about this fucking deli? And they've all went in and been so blown away. We've invested pocket change to them, but it adds up. Is is that what's happened, Rob? Is that is that why I, it's I'm this pic good? I'm picturing Subway, but they like coat the sandwiches in fucking gold. Well, you know, like it, the, I'm I'm glad you guys. Are, I mean, um, you got to remember, it's it did like thirty five thousand dollars worth of sales over two yeah, years yeah. it is two years. Um, and just just so you guys can have it, a look and we'll put this up on youtube it's in new jersey for fuck's sakes it's not going to be a great deli right maybe like, that uh, maybe the tip maybe the tip jars are a grain cider <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you look in podcast guest i've posted an actual picture that one of the reporters took of their sandwich now is that a multi-million dollar sandwich <laughs> Listener, I have to say that is not a particularly appealing looking sandwich. I mean, oh, it, it all comes out the same anyway. Just fucking eat it, you know. Yeah, what I mean? it looks I mean, nice. We're knocking it, but we don't know how it tastes. And I have eaten some things which, on, mm -hmm. on surface value, did not look that impressive. Right? Would you say it's worth a hundred million dollars? <laughs> well, it could be worth maybe, much maybe. more. We don't know. We've not tried it. <laughs> 
whenever whenever people start like judging food, it, it just makes me think of like fucking you know, like Paul Hollywood on like the the Bake Off thing where he's like, "Oh, that cake's shit." And it's like, yeah, but I bet you ate the whole fucking thing, Paul. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I I've never turned down cake. Do you know what I mean? Well, this cake's like, like a yeah. bit, a bit like subpar, and I'm just there, like, do you know what I mean? Shoveling the last of it in my mouth, like, oh yeah, it's a fucking disgrace, man. And let's, let's be real, <laughs> Alistair, you have oftentimes said that money is bullshit and fake. So how isn't this well, worth yeah. hundred billion dollars, if or hundred million? Sorry, if the market hey, says, hey. we all know from from the libertarians, we all know that the labor theory of value is junk, and of course. Something is worth value is created by how much someone is willing to pay for it. So, yeah, exactly. if enough people say that is a hundred million dollar sandwich, then that simply is a hundred million dollar sandwich. And who are you to argue with the free hand of the the, the, the sorry the invisible hand of the free market? I got too excited there. <laughs> <laughs> the free hand of the invisible market. That's something else entirely. <laughs> the free hand of the invisible market. <laughs> you all you all keep saying is that a hundred million dollar sandwich, but I don't think the business model is just to sell that one sandwich. No, it's not. <laughs> You got it's there. Not. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's to sell thirty-six thousand dollars worth of sandwich. Thank you. For all right, all right. R- R- all right. How does it actually work? All right. School so, is. how did I have to tell you a little bit about how the share structure works? Because otherwise, the rest of it doesn't. Really <laughs> just, oh, oh, there's, a, there's a very real danger. My eyes are going to fall out if you start talking about <laughs> share structures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, the, so the thing you need to understand about this deli sandwich shop's share <laughs> structure <laughs> is. Oh, Rob, go on, Rob, fill us in. The shares began trading in 2019. They don't really trade a lot. Like, it's only max a couple hundred out of 7.8 million outstanding that change every day. And there's, like, whole days when none of them really get traded. And the only real money they made is that 2.5 million from selling their own shares to, to private investors. Oddly enough, for a company handling quite a bit of money, I'll read again from the SEC filings. The company presently has no full-time employees apart from its officers and directors. A man called <laughs> yeah. Paul Marina, president. Well, yeah, it's Chris- closed for a lockdown, right? And, and, Chris- and Christine T. Lindenmuth. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, but- that is an American name. The, 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 na- the names here are coming thick and fast. Lindenmuth? <laughs> Lindenmuth? Yeah. Muff. I... I- Muff that you find in your pockets, like lint, no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Both are currently working for the company without compensation. So nobody's getting paid out of this thing. And yet, once again, it's made... It's worth a hundred million US dollar or more. Um, (laughs) I've spent the CIA front. (laughs) I've spent $35,000 on Deli Beat. Please help me run my business. (laughs) The amazing thing is the largest shareholder and director of the company and its CEO and its CFO and its treasurer and the director of the company is a guy called Paul Marina, who also happens to be the wrestling coach of the local high school next door to this deli. This definitely this definitely sounds like a CIA front, you know, like maybe they've just still got one like cupboard somewhere at the CIA with two guys from the sixties who are still like, Oh, what if we try to make goats explode with our mind and they come up with some scheme involving deli meat? And then did they just go, what if we, listen, we need somewhere to park the money from the Epstein slush fund until we got something else set up? And this was what what, they, what can we buy? Uh, well, there's this deli that's just started trading. Well, James, right, you're, sounds you're good. the closest one so far. No, I'm just thinking I'm... they've got some they've got some sort of uh, they've got some sort of scheme where they get like they they throw deli meat at a wall <laughs> and it like sticks. And if you throw enough of it fast enough. It like draws you like a, a satellite map of like Russian missile bases <laughs> or something, and they needed a cover for like all this deli meat they were going through. So they 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 set up a fucking like shop in New Jersey that doesn't actually make any sandwiches. So basically, and they've uh, got uh, they've got a couple of fictional employees that they don't pay. So so basically, you're proposing the existence of an eleven, but her psychic powers only work on deli meat, is what you're saying, basically. <laughs> Probably, yeah. The men um, who, the men who stare at Gabagool. <laughs> <laughs> the menace. <laughs> um, I was going to say I think the high school wrestling has something to do with it. Like it's a recruiting front. No, no, uh, no. In, uh, in the SEC but, filings, but that's... once again, in the SEC filings, they say why will this deli make a lot of money? It's because well, I'm quoting again. Local Is it students... because Paul Marina is going to suplex a fucking hot dog or something? <laughs> Is that why it's going to make people are going to pay like two bits to see it? <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> local students and coaches who frequently use the sports facility on the property are another group of potential customers. The practice facility <laughs> for wrestling is also home to what they call the Monster Factory, a professional <laughs> wrestling training and wrestling <laughs> match promotions organization. So this is next to, on the other side of Hideli, I think. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize the fucking McElroy brothers are involved in this. <laughs> He's got... 30 to 50 feral wrestler hogs and they need to eat pastrami. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is, this the, um, is this the front for energy production by Monsters Inc. or something like that? Is no, that it's, it's even stranger. <laughs> That's amazing. How much is your business worth? I don't know, but there's a lot of hungry high schoolers who do wrestling next door. <laughs> I mean, they're drawing <laughs> boys, so you've got to... Uh, yeah. you, you got to give them They credit. need the cold anyway, cuts. So, they so, need the cold cuts, man. <laughs> I do like how they're apparently so incapable of selling fucking sandwiches that the entirety of the high school next door is still a potential customer base, not an existing one. Oh, yeah, shit, that's a good point, actually. It's anyway. not even, <laughs> oh, we sell our sandwiches to the high school next door. It's, oh, it's... we might convince the high school next door to shop here. <laughs> yeah, that's actually brilliant. But there's, a, there's more high school involved in, in this story, weirdly enough. Um, <laughs> I mean, so, that, just to make that's it all start... Like, James, James, that's how like every single startup works. So like, oh, you know, you, maybe <laughs> we could, to sell hot dogs if to we get the right this. consumer base. Yeah, so, Sorry, so this is just a startup, but it's a it's a deli. <laughs> Earlier, Rob, you said that me talking about Epstein was getting close to the truth, and now you've mentioned there's another high school involvement <laughs> here. I'm starting to get fucking worried. All right, let me can, let me. I need to tell you a little bit more about some of the people who own these shares because it otherwise it doesn't. <laughs> the rest of this story doesn't really make sense. So tell us about the share is structure. This is where we go true and on. Is that what this actually? Actually is it, it's no it's even weirder than that this is like the oh my land trash future episode if anything so this is the so coach paul who is the ceo cfo director etc etc he's <laughs> ceo paid. coach paul <laughs> he doesn't get paid but he does own 1.5 million of the outstanding nearly 8 million shares and he owns warrants and i have to tell you about the warrants because they come up and they are important for later on to buy 30 million more shares for listeners who I don't have to know. say, Ali, in, in New Jersey, I don't think CFO Coach Paul is that rare an occurrence, to be honest. But, <laughs> Fair enough. Right, but just briefly on warrants, because you have to understand the warrant thing. Warrants are um, sort of an outstanding promise. It's essentially a right to buy additional stocks at a predetermined price before the warrant expires. There's always an expiry date. Um, on them. You can also trade these warrants, sell them um, back and forth to other people. And what happens when a warrant is actuated, it's converted into actual stock that is in addition to the existing 8 million shares. So there's a big pool out there of potentially even more shares than, than so, exist. So let me get this straight. It's basically, it's basically an option, except it creates stock when yes, you exercise it. Exactly. Right. It's like yeah. remortgaging your stock, kind of. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like financialising your stock even more than the stock itself. I mean, again, this... This, 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 this is honestly giving me a nosebleed. Like, <laughs> uh, it's just... They just oh. make shit up, aren't they? So, so hang on. When I got a nosebleed on the pod, it was psychic damage and everyone was laugh at James. When you get a nosebleed on the pod, it's just because it, we're talking about dry financial stuff. I see. The two extremes of this podcast, <laughs> psychic damage. Yeah, well, I, I, I just said I was getting... I'm not actually having a nosebleed, which would be the other main... <laughs> <laughs> it, would just, it would just be weird to like take the piss out of me for not having a nosebleed. Well, you don't want to spoil the sheets, do you, Jamie? So... Oh my no, god! Why, true, like... why, why, Jamie? Why is it every time I, be I begin the start of a joke, you just immediately shut it down like this? <laughs> Fuck's sake, mate! I know you're uh... in bed, but at least put in some effort. God damn! <laughs> Make me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Coach Paul has 1.5 million of these shares, almost 20% of the currently existing total. If he sold them all today, which he can't because, as I said, like this is not – nobody's really buying these things. The volume is super low on them. On paper, Coach Paul, with his shitty deli, is worth nearly 18 million US dollar on today's uh, share price. I just want to say this is such a great, like – one of the fruits of capitalism, a man who owns a bunch of shares in a essentially <laughs> non-functional deli worth 18.6 million. No, 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 Alistair, to be precise, he owns shares in a company that owns the deli. He doesn't own shares in the oh. deli. He owns sh shares in the oh. mother company, which is based in uh, Nevada. Um, 
Another <laughs> previous shareholder she's since sold out is is the aforementioned Christine Lindenbuff. Um, she, on the other hand, is a 46-year-old math teacher at the same high school where Coach Paul teaches. Um, <laughs> and according she to must the, be fucking good at maths if she's managed to sell out for that much. Uh, she's also she's also the vice president and secretary of the company. Um, according to the SEC filing, again, her in-depth knowledge and extensive experience is what makes her a valuable company, company director, again, for a company on paper worth $100 million. I like the implication here. That it's just not necessarily relevant to like running a deli, just in-depth <laughs> knowledge and extensive experience in general. There's one other guy. She has lived. She has lived. Well, there's one you other guy you need, to, you, need, you need to know in this story. Um, so we have Coach Paul, we have math teacher Christine, and the third guy you really need to know about is the company chairman, because of course they have one, is a guy called... Is he the school janitor? <laughs> no, no he's... Like, my prediction is this is going to be the guy who's like a financial guru or yes. someone who's convicted of something. Am I, am I right, Rob? Is, that... is, it, is, it, is it Bernie Madoff's ghost? It's his father who was convicted of things, but we'll meet his father in a moment. Um, but <laughs> P- Peter Coker Jr. Um, doesn't really own... Fuck off. Uh, no, hang on, sorry. Peter Coco Jr. Coker, C-O-K-E-R. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> even worse. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't object to that one as much. Like, that's you know, a... He's like Peter, Peter Coco Jr. He sounds like the fucking monkey off, uh, off a cereal box. We got a that's Wolf a fictional or... yuppie. I, a, a Wall Street guy who's a fail son called Coker. Yes. This is this is a bit. This has been written. This no, is not no, real. This is, all of this, I promise you, all of this is, is extremely real. He doesn't have a lot of in, he doesn't have a lot of experience, as far as I can tell, in the food service industry. But he does have quite an interesting background in serving. Well, the, uh, that's oh, fine because they don't serve food. We established that. <laughs> uh, but he does have quite an interesting background in serving on the boards of different companies that are all engaged trading in and with uh, Chinese corporations, specifically based in Hong Kong and Macau. Oh, wow. Macau, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I'm beginning to see how this works. That is great. So, uh, so should, should I mention what Macau is for people, uh, like in financial terms? Yeah, if you like, but but briefly, like they, I have a lot of stuff to still tell. tell there is so story. much to talk about this fucking Delhi. Yeah, <laughs> so okay. You're about. in China. Go. You're rich. You want to take your money out of China so the Chinese government doesn't fuck with it. How do you do it? You can't export it in normal ways. But there's this little Las Vegas of China called Macau, where you can basically go and sponsor a professional gambler to go and play Macau or or, or similar kind of games in Macau. Point is, right? You play them on games of chance and you hedge your bets so that you you come away with a fixed percentage return and then this money because it's gone through the gambling gets to basically evade the chinese tax authorities and gets funneled offshore and that's what macau has done for years and years on an industrial scale um so macau being involved in this strongly suggests we're about to learn about chinese money being funneled into the american market (laughs) let's go rob (laughs) um so (laughs) I didn't really, I didn't really take any of that in because all my brain was just going, "Don't have Macau, man." Over <laughs> and over and over. So, company chairman Peter Coker also doesn't take a salary, but he does have a weird habit of taking out. The company tends to take out credit notes payable to the chairman of, I think, in the last two years, of two hundred eighty-five thousand and forty-six thousand something or other of accrued interest and principal payments. So he's been paid. Over three hundred thousand US dollar, despite the company making a profit of just a hair over thirty six thousand. The only way. Right, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Just get to the part where you explain what, how this is a scam, and more importantly, how do we get involved? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so just one more brief thing um, about Peter Coker Jr. There's also a Peter Coker Sr. who he does own quite a number There's of fucking shares rogues here. gallery of people for this fucking deli. <laughs> just a deli. <laughs> Um, he owns 63,000 shares of Hometown International, which is the mother company, um, which is the one with the shares. And he has warrants, so these possible options, for 1.26 million more of the shares in this thing. Um, he is also the founder and managing director of another company based out of North Carolina called Tryon Capital Ventures. And that's an important name to remember. <laughs> that is such a fucking fake name. Oh, yeah, give it a go, <laughs> Capital Ventures. <laughs> I mean, Tryon's been in the news in the past because the chairman's uh, partner's father 
like was um, convicted in 2001 of illegally doing illegal campaign contributions to the North Carolina governor's race, um, where they funneled money through a fast food franchise to sluice illegal money into a gubernatorial campaign. Oh, wow. This is suddenly getting very interesting. <laughs> Carry on, Rob. <laughs> And he also has a guy who works for, for him. I won't bother you with his name. He also, by the way, owns shares in the Delhi and has warrants with two million. <laughs> um, the guy it sounds who like works everyone's for owning him, shares in this fucking Delhi. The guy who works for him, a guy called Peter Riker, Peter's in high school career included a quite a bit of wrestling under high school coach Paul Marina, CEO of <laughs> this deli of Hometown International Corporation that owns the deli that makes no money. If you're curious who bought, that, like who paid two and a half million dollars for these one dollar shares of this shitty company and all the warrants, um, three of the companies who bought these shares are based in Hong Kong and are all located on the same floor in the same building as each other. Four of the other companies with substantial holdings in the Delhi are based out of Macau and also mm -hmm. are based on the same floor of the same building. What a weird coincidence. What a weird, <laughs> what a weird coincidence. Both, uh, one of them, by the way, um, is also a consultant to um, Delhi International and is being currently paid 25,000 US dollars a month. Delhi International. In consultancy fees to a Delhi. <laughs> Another consultant. So let me let me wrap my head around this. There's two offices in Macau and Hong Kong who bought shares in this deli, and one of the guys in one of these offices is being paid twenty five large a month to advise the deli in how to run their <laughs> yes. operations. Yes. Am I wrapping my head around this correctly? <laughs> yeah. Correct. He's got to tell them what the most sensual cuts of of of, of <laughs> deli meats are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not the only uh, consultants. There's another group of consultants in them. You may remember them from two minutes ago. Uh, a little group called uh, Tryon Capital. They're also consultants. Um, <laughs> their role was to support in research, development, and analysis of product, financial, and strategic <laughs> matters. <laughs> research analysis of product. That's so good. I just, I just pictured them kind of going, what are we having for lunch today? Well, for research purposes, it has to be... <laughs> They decide They're building what... a better salt beef. They can make it bigger, fatter, sweatier, saltier. <laughs> this is Try the guy and... who gets to decide what goes in the sandwich that the uh, the <laughs> sign spinner on the street corner has to wear. <laughs> I, I'm afraid I, I really ought to advise you. I feel we should be diversifying into salads at this point. That's what the research is really returning to us. So just just to be clear, Tryon Capital Ventures is also being paid fifteen thousand US dollar a month for consulting on all these food deli related matters. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, oh just so my God. Clear, all these companies, uh, Tryon, uh, Coach Paul, the, the three companies based in Hong Kong in the same building, the four in Macau in the same building, they all have insane amounts of these warrants. Uh, if they all triggered them and they all like took possession of them, the total amount of outstanding shares in a Delhi company goes from 7.8 million shares to nearly 160 million. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I just... I how how have we gotten to this point where thing that uh, you know you know money is bullshit and all that but things are so completely divorced from any sort of semblance of making <laughs> any sense whatsoever that you could have a shitty deli store in New Jersey worth 160 million or whatever the fuck this share value is yeah, capitalism is great, isn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, yes, this is, uh, this is certainly the most efficient and effective way to distribute resources. <laughs> I was going to say, capitalism mm -hmm. is great if you've got capital, but based on the fact that it's run by fucking Coach Paul, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm beginning to doubt even that's necessary. Right, Rob, where is this going? Come on, bring, it, bring us further into the depths so, on this. Yeah, I will. Uh, so, uh, but just one more thing, because you imagine if you're paying 40k a month in consultancy fees, you get some really strong advice about how to put your Tele products out there, right? Um, sure. Th this mm -hmm. is once again from their SEC filing. Well, I mean, maybe if you were running an actual deli, but this is clearly money laundering or something, isn't it? So um, this this is how we <laughs> from, again from the SEC filing. We have limited advertising using social media and direct mailing to residents around our in the town around our store. 
We continue to place advertisers, advertisements in the local high school sports calendar. Local <laughs> to little papers, effect. <laughs> and attend various local events like the Lighthouse Challenge at held at Tinicum Rear Range Lighthouse and various fundraisers throughout the county. We expect our losses to continue during 2021. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to... Can we just go back to the name of that fucking lighthouse? Because another reading of it could be Tiny Calm Rear Range <laughs> yeah. Lighthouse. Jesus. Okay, okay, Rob, come on. Press us through this. We're getting there. Uh, uh, yeah, so obviously this company is like running at a wildly massive loss. But the thing that the chairman, <laughs> uh, P- Peter Coker, is most interested in is uh, seeking the best combination or merger opportunity for this business. But, said, said the company <laughs> in its filings, we have not conducted market research to identify business opportunities which may affect our ability to identify a business to merge with or acquire. So they you want think? to merge with... <laughs> You mean that might have an effect on your ability to find a company to merge with if you haven't gone and found any fucking companies you might be able to merge with? <laughs> What's the market cap of Subway? Just for comparison's sake. Uh, 12.3 yeah. 12. billion. Right, okay. In June so 2019. This... So, so this place is, what, roughly... Uh, 10% or no hang on less than that actually 1% of a subway is what we're saying basically <laughs> but the thing is, like, I mean obviously this thing is entirely mental and they do sort of uh, mention that in the SEC filings I'll read it again from them again our failure to adopt certain corporate governance procedures may prevent us from obtaining a listing on a national securities exchange i.e. we are so wildly out of control that no formal stock exchange uh, will touch us uh, in in a million years. This is written down. Yeah. So you, it's good to know that there is like just a tiny little voice of sanity on like the big stock exchanges, just going, "Do you think this is a good idea?" <laughs> like, and there is actually like a bar under which they will not allow insane shit like this to <laughs> get on there. Wait, this. This SEC thing that Rob's reading out, that was, that's was that been submitted by the by Delhi the itself. Pe- people themselves. By the company that yes. owns the Delhi. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So so they're saying, oh, okay, yeah, this is whack. Uh, we, we don't expect to go anywhere. Uh, it sounds to me like they don't want to go anywhere, like they're happy to well, just kind of I mean, coast it- on this inflated value. Well, yeah, because they're laundering, they're laundering money, so they clearly don't want the attention yeah. of anyone trying to invest in them. Well, I mean, in the code of, in, under the heading code of ethics, they do write the company has not adopted a code of ethics applicable <laughs> to, to its principal executive officer and principal financial officer. So, a coach Paul can essentially do whatever the fuck they like. <laughs> <laughs> ethics, we don't need no stinking ethics. <laughs> so I was surprised to learn that at the end of all this fucking weirdness, that there is a statement from uh, an accounting company, from an auditing company, that signs off on these public accounts and says, yeah, this is fine. There's no problem here. And I was like, how okay. the is fuck it, is this? Is the auditing company like, is it like fucking like Big Jerry's accountancy and garbage disposal <laughs> or something like that? No, it's a, it's a, it's a guy named Mauro Perino. Uh, it's, he's, uh, it's the guy that delivers the gas cool. It's very, it's very clearly. Forget about it, LLC. <laughs> like, that's, that's clearly what it is. Uh, well, I didn't. What they, they must make a good sandwich. What are you so upset about? <laughs> Come on, you don't like pastrami? Live a little. <laughs> um, so I did a little digging, and the journalist I mentioned before did even more. Uh, their auditors is a company called Ligget and Webb, based out of Florida. And th- last year in August, they were censured and fined by the board that oversees public accounting companies. And one of them was barred from being associated with registered public accounting firms in general n- because of other business not related to a hometown the firm. But, you know, that's how you know they're, they're, really, they're really good and they're really trustworthy. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously... Th- None of this shit makes any sense, and it didn't make any sense to me until this afternoon. Um, I read a story in the FT by Mark Vanderveld, and you know those companies, the ones based in China and Hong Kong and Macau that I mentioned before? They're not like Chinese mafia fronts or anything. They're actually huge and existing big investment pools, and they're run by professional uh, finance guys from other companies. So the money that they're managing, by the way, comes among from other places, comes from multi-billion dollar endowment pools from Duke and Vanderbilt University in the US. And they park it with these guys 
who then parked it with Hometown International. So the endowment pools of two big universities are quite substantially invested in the Delhi company that is worth a hundred billion, or is it worth more? What? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> hang on. Hey. That 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 went right over my head. So you're saying that the endowment funds of big U.S. universities, which are more corporations than educational establishments, yes. uh-huh. they have, for probably tax reasons, been lent out and invested with a bunch of firms based in, you know, Macau and Hong Kong, yes. who have then turned around and decided the best place to park all this cash from these universities is to invest it into this specific deli. Yep. Why? Right, that, that's the thing. I, Rob, what is the, why is this happening? Come on. <laughs> what, what, what is the actual thing? That, why are they doing this? What's essentially, the scam? essentially what, what this thing is, is, is like it's a mini holding basket for a lot of liquid capital. And what they're looking for, like they're essentially a blank sheet. And what they're looking for is a real company to buy. And then essentially if they buy uh, a company in the US, an actual functioning company, but they'll do essentially a reverse merger. So the Delhi company will merge with, I don't know, a real company, which it's US or mm-hmm. something. When they do that, the name of the company changes from uh, Hospitality uh, Delhi International to Widgets International. The sign on the ticker changes. They remove the entire board, put real people in. The management changes. Everything changes. And essentially, Widgets International merged with uh, Delhi International can enter the US capital market without too many questions mm-hmm. being asked. So, so basically, the, the deli itself is like a symbolic, just sort of. Oh, so it's it's name, um, it, right? It's, it's a shell. Like a, it's a it's a yeah. shell. It's Facebook. It's a Facebook page. It's it's one of those it's one of those things where they set up a Facebook page and they do all those stupid shits that your fucking mom and your grand click on where it says like, oh, no one can like can name a dog, <laughs> and then there's like seven hundred comments it's, and you get oh, all it's the like comments those fake- and the likes. And then you you change the pa- the name of the page to like fucking like yeah. we love Hitler or something like that. <laughs> That's exactly it. Oh, it's yeah, like those, it's those that um, for finance. Yeah, it's the stores. <laughs> you know the ads for clothing stores, and it's like uh, everything must go. You know, super discount. Buy this cool looking free leather jacket, and then the shipping costs seventy quid. It's just a it's a it's a it's a non existent just kind of. I mean, it's a thing. And it's, it's a, a whole- it's a it. It's a coincidence that the deli actually exists physically. No, no, no. Right, like, right. You, you need let a me, physical me, asset me, because... Yeah, James, sorry. Just, just wrapping my head. So basically, this is a tax dodge from some US-based universities and their, their, their you know, endowment funds combined with an offshoring of funds from probably some rich industrialists in China that happens to be temporarily parked in this vehicle of a deli that no one gives a shit about <laughs> whilst they decide what actual functioning business to make <laughs> their own without it being mm-hmm. subject to foreign, uh, what do you call it, um, yeah, restrictions on, rules. on so on capital ownership. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, one of the, so the FT actually tracked down one of the guys, I think in Macau, who's one of the real investors, the real money behind it. I thought you were going to um, say he tracked down the coach just to harass him. <laughs> this is a this is Masso, Masso Capital, which is genuinely like quite a rich entity, and they have turned out to do, have done business earlier, launching a similar venture with a guy called uh, Coco Junior as one of its directors. And essentially, the function of Masso Capital is to help. Asian companies who have a lot of cash um, make acquisitions and sort of escape the Chinese um, uh, restrictions on capital export. So this mm-hmm. is this is the function. The function of this thing is to be an empty shell for Chinese money and American money to walk through Macau into the shell of a Delhi company in New Jersey that doesn't make any money and has Coach Paul at the wheel. <laughs> so it's a business okay. skin suit. Gotcha. So here's what I want to know. I want to know how Coach Paul got himself mixed up in all this. Did he, like, own a deli and then, like, bit by bit, people started buying shares from this, like, holding company? Does he have no idea what's been No, no, happening? the whole thing is rigged. And is like he, the- like, you know, like, is he the... Br- is he the brains here? Is he part he's of not the, the brains the, here? He's a high school <laughs> gym coach. Yeah, no fucking well, way. that's what I want to know. Like, 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 has he just like sort of fallen into this massive fucking scheme? Does he have any idea what's going on? I'm what not is sure going how on much, whether or not he Paul's understands the full scheme, but I mean, he's obviously <laughs> let's let's say allegedly. I know David's not here, but 
allegedly he would be the the, the fall guy. He's the face of the thing because you need somebody to oh, to sign the pieces of paper that are. Oh, oh no! Why why are we uh, why are we culturing that and allegedly? I mean, like they're obviously up to no fucking good. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, there's been they haven't been sued yet. Then they're not under investigation, so I want to just be careful. But so so hang on, right? Let me let me wrap my head around this. So someone sidles up to Coach Paul. Yes. And basically goes, <laughs> yeah. I've got this great investment opportunity, right? We're going to take you to the fucking moon. And if it works, you'll yeah. get to walk away with a massive payday at the end of it for doing basically nothing. And if it fails, well, it's not going to fail. Don't worry about it. It's all very complicated. Is that mm-hmm. basically how this has gone down? Yeah, and yeah, I can just see I can just see the dollar signs appearing in his, eye, as, in yeah. his eyes as he yeah, imagines yeah. how many teenagers he could suplex for that kind of money. <laughs> and he immediately turns around, and I, I love this. He gets a woman whose name includes the word "muff," who is <laughs> the uh, secretary. He makes her the secretary of a company the which is working at his yeah. local high school. Like, um, yeah. this is this is this is amazing. But, I mean, there's no other words for this. But do you want to yeah. do you want to know the really amazing thing? Because this is already amazing. But do you want to know the really amazing thing? Is this, like, is this like the gooey center of this extremely <laughs> enormous this shell? Is, this is the bit where my brain went fully crack ping. Um, do you remember when I told you about the uh, about all those warrants that you know there's currently eight million shares, but there's potentially yeah, yeah. up to 160 million of them out there if they all activate. So the, mm-hmm. m- nearly all those warrants were sold to those seven Chinese uh, Macau, Hong Kong investment pools. And if all those shares were to come alive, say, when they do find a company they want to merge with and actually, you know, if they find Widgets US and actually want to merge with something and make this company into a real going enterprise, they would activate all the extra warrants. And then obviously, you know, you would have 160 million shares. And let's presume for now that the share price would stay the same, which it probably would, because what you want to do is get money into the country, so you don't really care about whether the price goes up or down. So if there's 160 million shares outstanding, and they are roughly priced at the same price they are now, this Delhi is not worth 100 million, it is worth 2 billion. Eat Take that, Subway. Oh, <laughs> Rob, you see Paul, Coach Rob. Paul flexing on Jared, going, yeah, who's the Rob. sandwich guy now, motherfucker? One sixth of a Subway, potentially. <laughs> Superb. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> how? I mean, how, 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 how we got to this point? How? <clears throat> Is this like? Uh, I, I honestly lost for words because this is just so. Sim- it's just, if this is a symptom of the of the, the the political system that we live under, of the cool zone. I mean, it's I just, like it's a, it's a philosophical question, though, isn't it? It's like can can you invent a crime so complicated that like it could it cannot be detected? Well, yes, so that's what Wall Street runs yeah. on and has yeah. run on for a very, very long time since its inception. Yeah. See, to me, this just sounds like a sort of roundabout international way of doing that startup thing where they get like one investor and then they use the existence of that one investor to prove that there is something inherently valuable about the startup to get other investors, right? And then you just keep coasting on this like sort of exponential I don't, I don't, I don't growth. I think it is. I think I, I think I called it right as soon as Rob mentioned Macau. This is money being bailed out of China so that yeah. it evades the Chinese authorities to then come into the US so that a bunch of rich Chinese businessmen can <laughs> own assets in the US without having to go through all the red tape. And by the way, it happens to involve US-based tax evasion on behalf of endowment funds from US <laughs> from US universities. Um, institutions of higher learning have a significant stake in a fucking like <laughs> deli in New Jersey, which is I know. not making a profit. <laughs> I'm just sorry. This, this is so this amazing. Is... This is the sort of thing Manchester University could be doing if they weren't wasting their time chasing people for fucking drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, has anyone has anyone got the vice chancellor for Manchester Uni on the phone? 
<laughs> Manchester University proudly unveils its newest department, a huge faculty of sandwich artistry. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need to fucking up their game, basically, if this is what the competition is up to. But, I mean, obviously, yeah. even, even for America, this, this was so weird that the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission actually did investigate and wrote Coach Paul a letter saying, we believe you are a shell company. <laughs> <laughs> <You're Yeah. listening? laughs> they wrote him a letter saying we don't know what you're up to but pack it in <laughs> yeah they received one response and it was just a picture of that fucking sandwich no no pretty close <laughs> coach marina coach paul marina wrote back a letter to the sec saying well the company De- delhi international has purchased new ca- <laughs> new carpets taken down walls and doors putting gas pipes and wiring for refrigerators reg- refrigerators and bought an oven with six burners among other equipment all to accomplish its goal of a grand opening thereby of yeah course, i love i love to send the sec a letter essentially saying well we've rearranged all these chairs <laughs> I mean, he's right. It's not a shell company. The deli's right there. No, it's not it's a shell a company. They can, make, they can make a sandwich. So. Yes, is, this is actually genius, right? <laughs> What's basically happened is if when, oh, can we use a shell company to move stuff into the US? No, if we use a shell company, it's going to get flagged. It is illegal. We can't do this. What if we just use a, any fucking company? Yeah. What? what if a, we yeah. what if we just use a shell company but it owns a van? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if we use a company yeah. that is a going concern, but we structure it in such a way as none of our money ever really properly interferes with that company? Then they can't say it's a shell company. We do have a going concern, and the fact it's wildly inflated is just shrug. Right. Like that's um, clearly it's, the strategy being used here, and it is it's like aesthetics. hats off to them. Yeah, like, it's aesthetics it's a because it, a shell company will have like an empty office, right? And then the finance police guys show up, and there's like you know like like one desk in the middle of the whole fucking floor, and they're like, "Oh, damn, it's a shell." We, we've been played but if you showed up to this office yeah. they'd make you a sandwich they would actually like, make look, you a sandwich look we got the burners <laughs> on another note on another note if there are any uh, Chinese investors who are listening or any uh, American <laughs> university endowment funds uh, the podcast business is ready to take your money <laughs> Yeah, podcasting is praxis. Limited liability company is getting off the ground. Now is the perfect time to invest. <laughs> Not a shell <laughs> company. Even Patreon. Talk to Rob. He knows what he's doing, right, Rob? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, this is all he's even problem. in Switzerland to make it easier for you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ! <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing. I know it's, like, so it's a good bold strategy. I, I can't wait to see how it pans out for them. <laughs> I'm gonna make a- Make a promise right now that if any like shady millionaires or billionaires in like give us money on Patreon, they're not getting it back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, you can call it a consultant f- consultancy fee and write it off your tax, whatever you want, but you can't have the money back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just yeah, I, in that, I, in that I, one I specific. In, oh, sorry, go on, James. This just all, it really does all boil down to, we're not a shell company, look, we made you a sandwich, is exactly yeah. what this is. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's real. Like, I genuinely can see the SEC scratching their head at this one and having to go to court. <laughs> Damn, that's that checkmate. Bit. Because, yeah, well, this is the beauty of it, right? Let's say they take them to court and it's like, okay, this is a shell company. And they get to stand up and go, your honour, we've been placing orders. We're not a very successful company, but we are a company. And... You know, what's the SEC's, re- SEC's reply to that? Like, yeah, how do like, they, you know, there is a trading concern here at the heart of this. The rest of it is just incredibly stupid. Do you, yeah, like, do you limit the amount of market value that, that like, a single small business can have? Because that could have wider reaching implications. Do you say, no, like, sorry, if it's one deli, then you can't possibly be worth more than XYZ, right? That's, that, 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 that could have... Well, I mean, like literally, yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to offer some advice to the SEC. Is what I would say is, you ring the local sheriff and tell him that there's like drugs <laughs> in the building, and then just drive like a military surplus tank through it, <laughs> <laughs> kill everyone involved. That's how. That's how like Americans get justice. So I mean, yeah, just swat might, them. Yeah, it might genuinely be genius just for the simple fact. But even if they do go to court, the outcome might be well, we need new. We've now established new rules around this particular circumstance. You lot don't do it again, sort of thing. Like, but like, g- genuinely, like, what's the downside to them trying this? That's amazing. For our listeners, you can literally like Google hometown international stock, and it it is on a stock ticker. Uh, uh, you can the, the price right now uh, is twelve point four US dollar. It it it's literally like you. 
Once again, this is not investment advice. Definitely do not buy these shares, but you could buy these shares if you were to choose to do so. I mean, they're essentially this whole category. Of- if you, if you, if it's your lifelong ambition to get involved in international <laughs> finance fraud, then like fill your fucking boots. <laughs> oh no! If it's let's be clear, if it's your lifelong ambition to be a part owner of a deli sandwich shop, that's what this is, right? At <laughs> should heart, I, it, should I buy some? Is confer- concerned. But this is, I mean, the, these weird, like over-the-counter penny stocks are really weird and they, they, a lot of them have been incredibly bubbling especially in the last couple of years especially since rona because everybody's fucking sitting at home and trading from their fucking smartphone so as long as there's stories you can tell like there's similar similar things like this although maybe not as stupid uh, but like huge explosions in values have happened to like uh bitcoin traders battery companies sustainable energy tech like whatever essentially catches the eye of reddit or twitter can like balloon even faster and higher than this yeah. thing, which is just a money funnel which for is... Chinese and investment money. It's just like... I think it's pretty epic. Imagine if Elon Musk tweets pastrami one day or something. Like, it'll just, you know, go yeah. haywire. Um, unfortunately for Hometown International, for now, they have been removed from the uh, OTC over-the-counter stock market for these stocks. Oh, uh, we... We hate a bad yeah. ending, don't we? However, they've only I looked been them up sus- on my broker. I couldn't find any. That's sad. I was going to buy some. They've only been on the suspended uh, on suspicion, <laughs> essentially, of shenanigans for three months when they can reapply and see if we can trade them again. So you know, future opportunities. <laughs> so <laughs> you want to tell people to <laughs> donate to the Patreon so we can buy a joint share? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave very, International. I'll leave. I think the very last word of this story to Mark Vanfeld of the FT who went to this diner. Um, I'll just read you to this brief line, which is... Oh, please it. tell me he tried one of his sandwiches. Please <laughs> tell me he tried one of them. I'm so here for this. D- during, during a recent lunchtime rush, three customers waited in the harshly lit dining room while staff tended the griddle <laughs> and struggled with a temperamental credit card machine. <laughs> <laughs> Two billion dollars, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Delhi to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh the little deli the little deli shop that could anyway isn't modern capital great isn't oh, it dear. wonderful so hang on one question i do actually seriously have you mentioned that the warrants had been sold back to the firms over in like you know yeah. china and china adjacent kind yeah. of areas does that mean that coach paul got his fucking fax tax payday from selling them no, Coach Paul, he still has the shares and he's still, uh, he's still in, at least according to the latest filing, he's just a shareholder. So if this thing turns out the way it does, there's two things that could happen. The share price stays the same because essentially it's, it's these, these Hong Kong and Macau based companies flooding in a lot of money, overpaying for the shares. And then Coach Paul will actually be worth nearly 20 million US dollar. Or the other option is, this is if they want to screw him over, they exercise all their warrants but don't raise the price because it's too thinly traded to actually be raised and lowered by the market itself, which means the price would go, you know, if you have 8 million shares that are worth 100 million, if you have 160 million, the individual share value just plummets through the floor. So then Coach so Paul the- just gets screwed. Okay, so I think mm-hmm. I can predict what's going to happen here, but I want to check a fact to make sure I understand it right first. So the guy who was being, who's on like their board or equivalent, who's being paid a massive, like he's been paying credit notes essentially from the company. Yeah, right? P- Peter Coker is Jr. He warrant, yeah. Is he a warrant holder? Um, yes, he bought the warrants and the shares out from um, the math teacher. She no longer has any shares because he bought them all from her. <laughs> oh, maybe not then. See, my assumption was he was getting paid in credit notes and that was his actual payday. I'm sure that's part of his actual payday. Warrant, I mean, but... he's been paid 320,000 US dollar, give or take. Um, Bain needs through this initial share sale. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, if if they find an actual widget US to buy with Hometown International, the Delhi company, then maybe if, maybe it's a, you know, it's a happy ending story. Maybe the movie paid. version of this is going to be fucking incredible. I mean, or, or maybe Coach By Paul gets, you know, found in the bottom of a river wearing concrete shoes. That is also possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, we've got nothing here. This is just astonishing. I know, I I find, <laughs> like, what can you say? That is, like, Kafka didn't imagine this shit in their wildest dreams. Jesus fucking Christ, yeah. 
What did we learn, Palmer? I don't know, sir. I don't fucking know either. I guess we learned not to do it again. Yes, sir. Well, I'm fucked if I know what we did. Yes, sir. It's uh, hard to say. Jesus fucking Christ. I, quite frankly, I didn't have time or the energy to do comment or commentary yet for today, and I think, you know, we're, we're good here. I don't think anything... I, I mean, to be honest with you, Rob, this was fucking exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it was a journey. Ride. Anyway, I think that'll uh, that'll do it for, for us. Um, you can certainly find us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash PraxisCast. Also, at Twitter, at PraxisCast, you know the whatevers. You will, you'll find our ads in the show notes. And, uh, of course, Elijah, is there anything you want to plug? Yes, very much so. On Friday the 21st at 7 p.m., I will be, uh, myself and James, actually, who was on tonight, will be joining uh, our friend Sin and Koza's stream about cancel culture. You can find that at twitch.tv forward slash skthecrusader. That is Friday the 21st at 7 p.m. And the week after, on Thursday the 27th, also at 7 p.m., I will be joined by uh, your Praxis Cast regulars, James and David, to do a digest of the recent Scottish election. You can f- watch that on th- uh, Thursday the 27th at 7 p.m. at twitch.tv forward slash Klezmer Rouge. And there will be links in the uh, in the episode description. Yeah. And we will also be back uh, on Thursday the 27th with yet another fine episode, uh, probably with a guest. So, yeah, all kinds of things to look forward to. And goodbye. Yeah. Yep, join us next time for Delhi or Derivative. <laughs> <laughs> I want some pastrami now. Fuck. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye-bye. everyone. Thanks for having me, guys.